This was on you, Mini's Forum Computer, at the end of the last video. We have the motherboard mounted on a test rig to allow us to test it out before fitting it into a case or rack frame. The first addition today is connecting a power switch to the front panel header. I've used these Vandalproof style switches in many builds, as they have been proved to outlast the systems they are connected to. While this motherboard takes DDR5 memory, it is in a SODIM format, that is small outline dim. SODIM memory modules are physically smaller than the more traditional dim dual in line memory modules, which have been used in many desktop machines. SODIM modules have been more widely used in laptops, but are now being used in small form factor desktop motherboards. So for this build, I have procured two 32GB SODIM memory modules rated at 5200 megatransfers per second, which is the maximum speed this board can handle. The memory module has a cutout on its edge connector, so it can only be inserted in the correct orientation. So now with both memory modules locked into place, we can now look to fit the two M.2 SSDs. For this build, I've gone for a 2TB module on which I'll be installing Windows as the operating system, and then a second 4TB module which will be the data drive. This motherboard doesn't need screws to fit these two M.2 SSDs, as it has a plastic plug fitment for each of the drives. Again, as with the memory modules, the SSD has a cutout on the edge connector, so it can only be inserted in the correct orientation. Some SSDs can run hot when running, and I may have to fit heat sinks to one or both of these drives, but we'll check that out for the next video. Now that both SSDs are fitted, we can turn our focus to the power supply for this test rig. For this build, I'll be using a 500 watt all in one PSU from HDPlex, and we will mount this under the test rig. This fitment is just temporary while we install the operating system and test out the system itself. The power connector is at one end of the PSU, and the modular cables attach at the other end. We will be connecting the 24 pin ATX style connector, plus the UK style power connector. A SATA power cable is supplied, but as we have no SATA ports on the motherboard, we won't be using that cable. These HDPlex PSUs come with a synchronization cable to allow you to have multiple PSUs in your case, but we'll keep that cable for later. The final connector we will be using will deliver power to the CPU part of the motherboard. There is a GPU power connector, but we won't be using that in this initial build. So now that everything is in place, we can attempt the first power up of the computer. As with many initial power ups of motherboards, you will experience a moment or two of doubt as the BIOS goes through its initialization and nothing appears on the screen. This motherboard was no exception, and seeing the logo appear on the screen does provide the reassurance that all is well. Here we have the initial screen of the BIOS or UFI as it is now known. If we click Setup, we can see the main menu, which reassures us that the processor is indeed a Ryzen 9 7945HX. Going to the Advanced menu lets us see that TPM, the Trusted Platform Module, is operational, which is a prerequisite for Windows 11. I'm going to leave everything at its default settings for the moment while we evaluate the computer. While there are lots of interesting settings to play with, I find it's always best to stick with the basic settings until you have time to investigate what each of the advanced options in the BIOS actually does. 
The PC health status screen informs us that the system sees the 120mm cooling fan and it is under speed control. When fitting this board in a frame or case, we will of course be adding a second fan. The boot setting confirms that the motherboard will look to the NVMe SSD first when attempting to boot. Further down the main screen, we can confirm that there is indeed 64GB of DDR5 memory fitted and running at 5200 MHz. The processor speed is also confirmed at 2.5 GHz. While you can get processors that run at faster clock speeds, you do get 16 physical cores and 16 logical cores with this processor, giving a total of 32 processing cores on your system. The next step is to install Windows 11 on the computer. As this does take some time, we will speed through to the end and allow Windows to do its usual updates. Once completed, we can launch the disk management and let Windows configure our 4TB SSD. Next, we need to have a good look at just how performant this new computer actually is. As we have done with previous builds, I'm going to run Passmark on this machine to allow a comparison to computers I already have in use. As you will see, this machine scores highly in both the CPU and disk marks. The next set of marks are from an Odroid H3 computer, which is a 4-core processor with integrated graphics. And the final set of marks is from an Odroid H4 Ultra computer, also with integrated graphics. So we can see that this new Minis Forum computer is a significant upgrade. There are a number of other content creators who have already run many games and computer emulations on this platform, so I won't be repeating these. However, there is one additional check that is easy to do on any Windows computer, which is to run the resource monitor from inside the task manager. One of the metrics you can monitor is CPU use. When computers had only four cores, this tool allowed easy visualization of how heavily loaded each core was. Now that we have 32 cores on this computer, it's more of a challenge. I tend to get around this by installing an application called Process Lasso from Bitsum on each of the computers I run. There is both a free and purchase version and the software makes a good job of monitoring the CPU usage and the processes which might be taking up a lot of resources. This software also has the ability to lower the priority automatically of processes to allow the computer to remain responsive to you, the user. Additionally, it allows you to run loads on any or all of your CPUs to stress test the system. Now that we have proved this new system is fully operational, in the next video we will start to look at an enclosure. But that's it for today. Thank you for watching.